So as a supplement to the written steps, I wanted to go ahead and share a time-lapse video of some of the sculpting that took place when I was creating this character. Uh, here I'm going to show you how I went about creating the body. Um, and it's really just a combination of using the mesh insert brushes and Dynamesh. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process, but I find often being able to see it take place is a really good supplement to the written steps and the photographs of seeing the process as well. So the important thing to remember is just when you're Dynameshing, make sure that you crank up your resolution so as not to lose the displacement detail that you've sculpted in, uh, or the finer detail, I should say, that you've sculpted in. And it's also important to note that there is a process that we use um, for retopologizing this mesh uh, just to give us um, a poseable model and a model that's a bit more manageable with lower subdivision levels. And what I'll do is I will come back in and narrate over that section as well. But and up until that point, go ahead and watch this in time lapse, and then I'll come back in the next stage uh, when I feel like it's important to talk to a point on screen. Now at this stage what we're going to do is duplicate the sculpture of the body. We're going to duplicate and then take that duplicate model and use Z Remesher to create a low res version. So I'm going to go into geometry and come down here to Z Remesh and I'll set my polygon target and then I will remesh the model. <clears throat> so the idea here is I want to create a lower resolution version of the model. I will then divide that up and then reproject it onto the high res. What that does is it gives us all of our subdivision levels, it gives us all of our sculpted detail, whereas in the Dynamesh model all we have is that one subdivision level. And if you've ever tried using Transpose to pose a model that doesn't have subdivisions, you understand how difficult it is. It also puts you at a disadvantage when you're trying to sculpt more large forms. So here you can see we've got a really nice mid-res, posable, animatable mesh here. I'm going to subdivide it a couple times and then I'll go to the subtool stack. I'm going to turn on visibility on the head and then I'm going to reproject to capture all that detail. So I just go to the project section here and I will click project all. <clears throat> So what happens is we capture that detail there. I'll probably need to subdivide another couple times and project again 
to get really fine detail, but the idea is that we're able to leverage the strengths of both Dynamesh and subdivision modeling when we bounce our subdivision or bounce our Dynamesh model back down into a subdivision model like this. So it basically allows us to use all the benefits of Dynamesh and then immediately bounce back into a subdivision model that has multiple levels of division and all of our detail. So there we go. You can see it's essentially indistinguishable from the original sculpture. There you go. So that's a really valuable tool that I use constantly whenever I Dynamesh. I would very rarely Dynamesh something that I didn't want to have a, um, multiple subdivision levels of. It's just the nature of sculpting in ZBrush I feel is most powerful when you can use the strength of having multiple subdivision levels. So I will often use this process to bounce back down into something that has multiple subdivisions. So at this stage, we're really going to have to go in and start sculpting the detail in the body. Because we have these arms and this torso that have no detail on them at all, we want those to match up with the head, which has a quite a high degree of detail on there. So what we'll do is we'll let this projection finish. Because we're projecting so much detail at such a high resolution, it has to think about it a little bit longer for this particular, res for this particular projection. And there we go, we have our projection. So at this stage, you could actually delete your original sculpture, or you could just save a new file and then get rid of it from your current file, just to save you know, space in your uh, subtool stack. It's not absolutely necessary, but it can be helpful, because we really don't need that original sculpture anymore, because this version carries all of its detail. And here we go, starting to work on the shoulders and the torso. And again, this is just the regular standard brush and clay tubes brush. Uh, just like I mentioned in the text, I really do like using the clay tubes brush with um, no alpha. I find it creates a really nice, subtle buildup of form. We're using it with an alpha at this stage for the deltoid, um, but you will find that I turn that alpha off later on when I'm trying to make things a little bit more subtle. And just smoothing off that line of delineation where the end of the original bust was projected on. So I'll use that clay tubes brush to sort of rough in the big generalized shapes of the torso and back anatomy. I want to get the feathering of those heads of the pectoralis muscles coming down towards the thoracic arch of the rib cage and smooth as I go. Often uh, people will forget when they're newsy brush users is to smooth as you sculpt. If you're constantly smoothing as you're working and be sure that you turn down the intensity of your smooth brush you will find that you are able to create better form faster. I think just that by smoothing you help keep things clean and you avoid sort of inflating stuff too big or making things too lumpy. So here I am sort of delineating those heads of the del deltoid again, um, trying to really suggest the bony landmarks, the Ackerman process there at the shoulder, uh, doing the triceps. Really I'm just doing big generalized brush strokes to create these muscle forms. This is actually one of my favorite parts of the body to sculpt, the clavicles and the shoulder girdle. It's important to remember the clavicles look like handlebars. Don't make them straight lines. Make sure that you're looking down at them from the top and you get that nice zigzag 
uh, it's really important and it will read um, from all the angles. Uh, making them a straight line going back is a very common error and you want to avoid that. So I'm using the standard brush with just uh, this wrinkle alpha to create sort of like a wrinkly skin texture here on the surface of the model. And that'll go a long way just to get rid of that really smooth uh, 3D look to the body. Oftentimes I'll put detail down even when I'm not done with my form yet with the understanding I'm going to smooth it back and continue working my form just so I can get rid of that perfectly parametrically smooth surface which I find really unpleasant to look at. I like there to be some noise on the surface while I'm working. Here I've turned off the alpha on the clay tubes brush as I promised and you can see that it really does give you a different type of form, a very subtle form. That's actually a piece of costume that I was going to put in, but I decided not to because it looked like a toilet seat. Not sure what alien world this character is from, but I don't think she wears a toilet seat around her neck. So I'm just smoothing that back, creating some crosshatch wrinkles. There we go. So I'm actually going to time lapse the video from this point and just let you watch my process in a bit faster uh, video feed. Um, really this is just a matter of going in and suggesting uh, anatomical forms underneath the skin and then also creating some nice um, uh, cross-hatched wrinkles on top just to make it feel like there's an, sort of a wrinkly sort of alien skin stretched on top of that anatomy. So I'm going to go ahead and switch into time lapse mode now and just let you watch the rest of this process. And I will see you again at the end of the video. And here you can see that we've really started to suggest a lot of anatomy and a lot of form in this character. So it's really starting to come together. Even though a lot of this will be hidden under the costume, I do think it's important to sculpt it and have it there. So that concludes this look at sculpting the body and using Dynamesh in conjunction with projection to allow us to take advantage of the strengths of two different types of sculpting inside of ZBrush, the Dynamesh tools as well as the subdivision sculpting tools. So let's go ahead and move on to the next video.